Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am flipping the Spellbinders June 2023 club kits. And as per usual with my flip videos, I will be making at least one flat, one layered, one interactive, and one pop-up card. In today's video, I'll be featuring the small die of the month, the large die of the month, the clear stamp and die of the month, and the Glimmer of the Month, including the add-on that you can get with the Glimmer of the Month. I do also get the 3D Embossing Folder of the Month, but I didn't actually happen to use that on these sets of cards. So I'll be crafting um, with that separately, and when I have a project to share featuring that um, embossing folder, I'll be sure to add it to my Spellbinders playlist, which is where you'll find all of my projects and crafty hauls featuring Spellbinders products. So let's make these. Okay, so starting with my flat card, what I will be featuring on this card is the stamp of the month. With the stamp of the month kit, you have the option of getting just the stamp by itself. Or if you want, you can get it with the coordinating dies. And the dies this month, and I think usually that's it's the case that the dies include dies to cut out your sentiments too, which is really nice. The um my definition of a flat card though is not strictly just your card base, but your card base plus at most one layer. So what I'm going to do is this is a panel that I've cut to USA2 in size, so four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall, and I will stamp out a scene. The key to stamping out a scene is it can look a little bit more natural and organic if you if you do have some things that maybe overlap one another a little bit. But if you were to just stamp those images right on top of each other, you'll have a lot of crisscrossing lines and it won't necessarily, the scene won't necessarily make sense. So to prevent that, um, you can do what's called masking. And what I'm going to do with this little crab here is I've stamped it out once already because the crab, I want to appear as if it's the closest object to the viewer. So anything else that gets stamped, um, that gets added to the scene, if it happens to overlap with the crab, I the crab needs to uh, be blocking that, um, anything that is behind it. And so that's what your mask achieves. It helps to um, basically protect that crab image from anything else that might get stamped on top of it. And you can use anything for masking paper. I actually happen to use Avery repositionable labels because they're just really inexpensive. So you just want to stamp your image, whatever you want to mask off, onto some masking paper and then cut right on the stamped line. And then you can stick it onto your stamped image. So I'm going to do the same thing with this um, jellyfish here. With the jellyfish though, it's got, um, it has sort of the body of the jellyfish, but then it's got a lot of lines for the tentacles. And the lines, they're just, they're just thin lines. So you don't have to worry about masking that part off because if it crisscrosses, if you get stamped images that crisscross into that area, it's not a huge deal. Um, you just don't want images crisscrossing into the main body. And then once you peel off your mask, then um, you can see that those areas are nice and solid and they will have um, the effect of looking like they are in front of the things that were um, behind them. And so now I'll just, uh, with the scene stamped out, I am going to just go ahead and color up this image. And it's fun to do this every once in a while. It's almost like creating your own coloring page. And I'm coloring with my Ohuhu markers because they're really affordable. And so when I wanted to get started in alcohol marker coloring, I, I didn't want to dive right into Copics because th that's quite a bit of an investment. And I found that 
they're just remarkably, Ahuhus are just remarkably high quality. I do have a small set of Copics and, and yes, I, I will grant they are nicer, but I would say Ahuhus for what you're paying are pretty phenomenal. And so I have the, um, in terms of alcohol markers, that's the brand that I have the widest range of colors in. And I have found that it is useful to have a wide range of colors. Initially, I thought, you know, why would somebody ever need, you know, 100, 200 colors? But it really does help to create that whole, you know, color blend of a dark, a mid, and a light for your shadows and for your highlights when you do have a lot of colors and it's particularly useful if those colors aren't too too far apart in value so that when you go to blend it's easier to do uh not that it's impossible to do otherwise it's just easier if you do have a lot of colors that are a little bit closer in range and i've got all of my main um images colored now and this is going to be a first for me. I'm actually going to color the background with alcohol markers too. Normally I to build a scene like this, normally especially with stamps that have coordinating dies, which is what you can get with the clear stamp of the month, I would be tempted to just uh, stamp these out, die cut them, and then create an entire background separately, whether that's with sprays, an inky background, whatever uh, method is, um, you know, uh, interesting to me at the time. And then I'll just build up my scene of die cuts. But being a flat card, I wanted to stamp everything out and color everything in. And even even when I do have a flat image like this, a lot of times I'll I'll cheat and I'll just use my soft pastels <laughs> to color in the background. But you don't get that really vibrant color that alcohol markers give you. And so it was really fun to to do this. It's it's a first for me to color in an entire background, an entire panel with alcohol markers. And it was just a, a lot of fun. So that is my flat card and I'll recap all of my cards at the end of this video as well. Now moving on to my layered card, this is going to feature the large die of the month and I thought I would use this in a little bit of a different way just to show that you don't necessarily, there's so much that you can do with this um, die set in, in particular with this large uh, bottle which I guess can be sort of a glass bottle and it's really cute. It's got a lot of details to it. It has this, um, the cork that you can use as a stopper and that comes in four pieces that you can layer up to create two pieces. The, the portion of the cork that sits outside of the bottle and then the portion of the cork that, that, uh, sits inside the bottle. And there is a second um, die that is one where you can cut, in one die it will cut um, the base of the bottle and as well if you were to use this the way it was designed, which is to create a bit of a water seam, you would have additional um, pieces that you could essentially kind of color block and create the the water that would be inside the bottle. But what I did instead was just to take the base because I'm not going to fill this um, bottle with a water scene. I'm actually just going to fill it with butterflies. And so I chose one of the butterfly sets from BB Cameron's um, butterfly collection. And this one's really great because it has a lot of different size butterflies. And what's great about it is that you can, they are a solid cut. So she does have one set that has uh, more of a layering style of butterfly. This one I thought was fun because it's, it's just the solid outline. So you could do a lot with maybe playing with the negative space and things like that. But what I've chosen to do is um, die cut it out of some pattern paper 
which I thought would be really pretty. Now, with all of my butterflies assembled, um, and the assembly is really easy because it's just the solid butterfly body with, uh, or wings with the, the body. And I, uh, I attached this panel, but then I forgot the fact that I wanted to emboss it. So I did choose a 3D embossing folder, but it's actually from a previous, uh, club kit. And the reason is because this month's, um, club kit for the 3D embossing folder, it is water themed. And since I'm going outside the box a little bit and using this large die of the month, um, not for a water themed card, I wanted to find an embossing folder that was more floral themed because the papers that I die cut my butterfly out of is a floral print. And so that's why I, I kind of dug back to a previous embossing folder. And now I'll start to assemble everything. So with vellum, it's a little bit tricky because when you put adhesive onto vellum, it, it has the tendency to make it look different. And so usually the way to hide that is if you had something that was solid on top of the vellum, then you can hide your glue behind that solid piece. The look I was going for though was that there are going to be some of the butterflies that are inside the jar, which would be more of a um, kind of like a frosted glass jar. And there will be some butterflies outside of the jar. And so there aren't going to be a lot of opportunities to hide the glue <laughs> that I need to attach um, this jar to my card base, which is a five by seven card because this jar is really big. It's actually, I think it's a smidge larger, taller than USA 2, but proportionally if it's really, really well onto a five by seven. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get all of my elements together. I cut out the little tag that comes in this die set and there are two debossing plates that you can use to add a little sentiment to your tag. I use the one that says um, for you, but the other debossing sentiment plate says um, hi. And you do get a die that will cut out what will look like string, but I decided to to actually use real twine <laughs> to to wrap around the neck of the bottle and tie through that tag. Now I did um what I'm trying to do is just start to position things because the items that are inside the jar, I'm actually going to glue straight to my card base. And that's why I keep bringing the jar on and off to um, align it and just make sure that um, as I glue down things like the butterflies, I just want to make sure they're, they are going to be contained within the confines of the jar so that it, it looks, it looks um, logical, essentially. And so I'll um, continue to kind of move things around a little bit. And as I get them into position, the things, as I mentioned, that are inside the jar will go um, directly onto the card base. The stopper, the cork stopper at the top, um, because that's nice and solid, that can get glued down to the card base. I did add a couple of extra layers to it just to make sure um, everything was nice and flush because the twine added a little bit of dimension. And speaking of the twine, since that's a solid uh, piece as well, I put a little bit of glue down there. And this butterfly is actually outside of the jar. So I was able to use glue on that butterfly to hold down the bottom portion of my vellum. So my vellum is only attached to the card base through that butterfly and at the cork and the twine at the top. Um, and that's sufficient. I mean, it might catch, it might lift on some things, but um, 
for the most part, it's, it's held down in those areas. Okay, so now moving on to my interactive card. I'm going to start off with two panels here that are USA 2 in size, so four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And I am going to create, my aim is to create a bit of an ocean background. So I've got a little bit leftover spray. I think this was a, um, an experimental little jar of, uh, I think, uh, watercolor, um, liquid watercolor combined with a silver, um, pearl powder. And so it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. And then I'm using Tonic Studios, um, or Nuvo Mica Mist. These were, these were from, um, their craft kits, I'm sure. And because they are sample size. And I, sp I'm spraying those onto watercolor paper. And they were actually um, scraps from previous panels. I didn't really love how they turned out. So I just flipped it over and decided to use the backs of those. The watercolor paper that I'm using is pretty thick though. So I do like to use liquid adhesive to attach that to my um, my card base so that it, it does have a nice, a nice really firm stick. And this card will feature the uh, small die of the month, which has this really, I think it's really cool looking. It's a, it's an octopus. And I was going, so I was going for the, um, an Ursula kind of, uh, octopus look. So that's why the purples, I just didn't know what combination to use because there's actually, there's three dies that you can layer up to, create your octopus. So there's one die that is the largest one. It has, um, basically it's the base and it has all of the little suction, uh, cups on the, um, tentacles. And then there's another one that also includes the head of the octopus that's slightly smaller and that goes on layers on top. And then you have a third die, which is another set of four legs and that has a little donut um at the top of it and it's perfect i'm i'm guessing it was designed to be used this way because they wouldn't have um cut out that little uh donut piece if if it uh, wasn't designed this way but basically i'm going to make a dancing style card so what i did was i layered up um I just layered up two of those um, uh, background legs, I guess, so that there's a little bit of a shadow uh, on them. So I offset it. I cut it once out of black and then another time out of that darker of the two purples and just offset that a little so that I had a little bit of a shadow. And that way that piece is a little bit... Um, it's a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, which will also make it swing a little bit more easily because if it's too light, it just, it just won't swing. It doesn't have that, that heaviness of hanging and, um, having the weight have that momentum to go back and forth. And I'm going to build up my scene with some elements, um, both from the small die of the month as well as the large die of the month. So the large die of the month has a lot of little scene building elements. And um, here to create the um, interactive piece, all you have to do is just put a circular foam dot right in that donut piece of your uh, of the legs that go behind the octopus. And then put your top layer, the octopus piece that actually has the head, and uh, you want to attach that to your foam dot. So the legs that are behind, they're not actually glued down to anything. They're just hanging on top of that foam dot, and that's what allows them to swing back and forth. The top layer of the octopus, because we've glued that onto the foam dot, it basically locks those legs in place so it can't, you know, you can't remove it from that foam dot, and it'll just continue to swing back and forth. So really, I love the dancing mechanism. It's so easy to to create, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun. 
Uh, as I was saying, the elements that I'm using here to build up the rest of my little scene is a combination of dies that are in the large die of the month, as well as a couple of dies from the small die of the month. So the small die of the month has the that that wood piece that also has some debossing um, sentiment plates. And so I've chosen the sentiment hay, but you could also use the debossing plates from the large die of the month. They would fit onto that wood plank as well. And the from the large die of the month, I used the rock, which I die cut twice just to, um, you know, give uh, some interest there. And also in the large day of the month, there's a lot of different ocean plant life. So coral and seaweed and things like that. So I've just die cut them out of really bright, fun colors. Uh, oh yeah, the small die of the month also does have a couple of dyes, um, for seaweed too. So I've just cut those out of different different colors and I will just sort of build up this little scene. The only thing you need to be careful of is to make sure that none of your elements obstructs or blocks the octopus legs so that it can continue to just swing back and forth um, without uh, without hitting anything. The last thing that, that I added off camera were just some clear gems so that uh, it kind of looks like water or air bubbles going through the ocean. So really, really fun. Love, love these dancing legs. It's just, it's a lot of fun to play with and a really easy interactive card to make. And I love that background from all of that um, mica mist and shimmer powder. All right, so now moving on to my last card, my pop-up card. This card is going to be a wiper card, and this too will be a 5 by 7 card. So I have these two pieces here that have been cut to, um, both of them have been cut to 7 inches wide. The top piece is 5 inches tall. The bottom piece is 2 and a quarter tall. So... Top piece five by seven, bottom piece two and a quarter by seven. And for both of those, I've just scored at one inch and two inch, and that's it. Now, what you want to do is take your bottom piece, the one that's two and a quarter tall by seven inches wide, and you want to rotate that so that the two score lines, the score lines that I put at one inch and two inch, they are going to be on the opposite side as um, from the other piece. And that gives you this mechanism here. This will all still uh, fold down flat to fit into a five by seven card. And the fun aspect of this is, well, you could just leave the card like that and, and build up your scene. And I think it's just an, a nice little um, card that will, uh, sort of stand up and, and display nicely, but I am going to add a wiper element to it so that when you open this, it's going to um, have something sort of kind of fly across the scene. So um, that'll make a little bit more sense in a bit. For now, what I'm going to do is actually just get my scene ready. So on the back here, I've just cut some plain light blue cardstock to represent my sky. You could if you want, and I would definitely, if you were gonna um, maybe do an inky background, I would ink up the background first when it's nice and flat and then put your score lines in and then you'll get a nice seamless um, background. And because otherwise, if you score first, you're, it's going the, where the folds are, they might take the ink a little bit differently and it might look a little bit different. So if you wanted to do an inky background, I would recommend inking everything up first, then putting your score lines in and folding. Now for the bottom section, what I've done in advance is I've glimmered up two 
um, uh, sections of colored cardstock. So these are Spellbinders 100 pound solid color cardstock. They glimmer up beautifully. And I use the Glimmer of the Month, which has um, these two plates with different wave designs. And initially, my um, these two panels were cut to two and a half inches tall. And I just glimmered the whole length of what the Glimmer plate um, allows. But I'm not going to need that full stretch. I only need it to go five inches wide because remember, we scored our lines at one inch and two inch. So um, at the uh, these are the two sort of one inch sections, which I'll just cover with solid color cardstock. And I'm not going to worry too much about carrying that wave pattern um, all the way across. I think it's I think it's OK to to just have it on the front. But if you wanted, you could glimmer up some a little bit of extra and then have that wave continue um, on these little sections as well, just to maybe maintain that continuity. Um, but I thought since I had the little <laughs> bits of scrap left over from my glimmered panel, I would just use those and, uh, and cover up the sides there. And what I'll do is create a little bit of a um, kind of a shaped border here because the glimmer of the month does come with each each wave design actually has two border dies. So you could cut a shaped border either at the bottom or at the top. And you have um, lots of choices there. And both wave designs have, have border dies, again, at the top or the bottom. So you can use it in, in a variety of different ways. And I've layered those up so that they um, um, just kind of overlap a little bit, but then you get the, you get the effect of, you know, the two tones of, um, this beautiful teal paper. From the large die of the month, I am, uh, taking the whale, which is really, really pretty. It's got so much detail in it and it is a layered, um, set of dies. So you have one die that you can, I love that on the single die, you, you can cut it out of black and have all of the pieces that need to be black. And then the other die, um, you can cut out of white for the white belly and all of that white detailing of the, um, of the whale. And so there's just a lot of detail, a lot of debossing detail that the die puts in. Really, really fun. Very easy to assemble as well. Now, this is a piece of clear um, heavyweight acetate. You can use some packing uh, packaging, you know, plastic packaging if you want. And the um, the trick to this is you just need to fold a, your um, acetate at a uh, 45 degree angle. And that gives you that that sort of corner there. Um, so basically you have a little triangle on the one end and I've got that folded edge, um, kind of pointed so that when this is folded, my acetate is actually going to run horizontally and be hidden by the waves essentially. And then when you open the card, the this piece of acetate will actually um, extend upward as it flattens out. So if you're ever wanting to do a wiper mechanism like this, the way to think about it, it how to position this is the key is to get that fold in first. So you want to fold down that corner at that 45 degree angle. And then once you have that folded, the way to figure out how you need to position this, because you could put this on the left side, you could put it on the right side. It just depends on the movement that you want to create. But basically, when that acetate is folded, you want to put it in the position where it's um, going to be hidden initially. And that way, um, when it opens up, it will swing up and become visible. 
Now that the mechanism is in place, I can actually glue these two pieces together. And the only place they get glued are on the um, outermost one inch tabs. So you want to just make sure you have glue just on those, um, the furthest uh, one inch section of both panels. So the shorter panel as well as the taller panel. And, and so that basically creates the base of our card along with the interactive wiper mechanism. And the tricky part now is to figure out how to position my whale because it's my whale that I want to initially be hidden. And then when you um, pull the card and, and open the card is when I want the whale to open up and, and, um, and sort of appear as if it is uh, kind of jumping out of the water. And the trick with figuring out how to position it is to just open and close it a, a couple of times and just make sure that when it's closed flat, that it's hidden behind, um, in my case, the waves. So whatever you're putting at the front of your card, that it will hide your whale. And as well, that the whale doesn't extend beyond the boundaries of the card. So in this case, that it doesn't go below sort of that bottom edge of the card. Now, all I'm doing here is I've just die cut a couple of extra pieces just to make my whale a little bit more substantial. So it's a little bit thicker. And that way it's... um. It's not going to accidentally um, like kind of bend or fold because there's with the waves there, there's a there's a potential that it might catch on the waves as it's um, coming back down. And so with the extra couple of layers that I added, one extra layer for the tail and one extra layer for the body, it just makes it a little bit thicker. So if it accidentally bumps into something uh, on its way down, it's it's going to um it's going to survive that. It'll be okay. And so you'll just see me continue to just play with this to move it, um, adjust it back and forth and uh, to play with the mechanism to continue to open and close the card and make sure that it's um, as it's swinging up that it lands where I want as it's being closed down that it's hidden by the waves um, in front of it. So so that's a little bit, it can be a little bit tricky to just play with this and um, get it in the right uh, spot. And you can see I played with it so many times my tape kind of lost <laughs> its stickiness and even tore up some of uh, my whale. But it's a good reason, it's another good reason to add that extra <laughs> bit of cardstock just in case, just in case that happens to you as well. But um, but this is just a really fun mechanism to have just that little bit of a hidden hidden little surprise. And I guess this is a little bit of a cross between a pop-up card and an interactive card because it is kind of fun to just continue to open and close the card just to watch that whale uh, pop up. <laughs> now, the sentiment that I'm using is from the add-on to the glimmer of the month and it's really great so this one reads um, make a splash on your birthday which i thought was really fun and the add-on set not only has your glimmered sentiments but it it also includes coordinating dies to cut out your sentiment so i just die cut twice i die cut my glimmered sentiment and then i die cut from that darker of the two teal card stocks and I offset it a little bit just to have that bit of a shadow there. And so I decided last minute that maybe it might be fun to add some of these water drops that you get with the large die of the month. So I've cut that out of some iridescent mirror card because it has a nice little shimmer to it. And one thing that you can do once you have your main 
Once you have your main wiper mechanism, you can actually continue to attach more acetate to this. And that's all I did was I, I just cut a little, about a half inch, maybe not even half an inch by maybe about one inch, one and a half inches. And I just attached um, this little bit of acetate here to the wiper mechanism, to the acetate that's our, that my whale is attached to. And that just gives me additional um, opportunity to place more items. And using acetate makes it sort of appear as if it's, it's you know, kind of just hanging out in midair, which is what you would want for your water splashes. So you wouldn't want to use like a solid color cardstock there. And that's the only reason why I'm using acetate is because I know that these elements, ultimately I want them to look as if they are in the air. And so the acetate being nice and clear will, will give that illusion. And the trick here is just the same as with the um, placement of the whale initially. And that is to say that you just want to make sure that any elements that you attach to it, as well as that additional little acetate um, bit that I added, that it's hidden, you know, when it's closed and that when it's folded, it also doesn't extend beyond the, the boundaries of your card because uh, then it might make it such that you can't, you can't fit your card into uh, the appropriate size envelope anymore. And then, um, then you can just have some fun once, once you figure out, you know, where you can place things at what, such that they will um, be hidden and um, still be sitting within the confines of the card. And it's just a bit of extra, like a little bit of extra fun detail. And so I thought, I thought that was a fun little extra um, touch there. And it's just really fun. Like if you, if you get a little bit too close to, um, this whale is just really big. And so uh, I could have made this a little bit larger because you would probably want to ship this card with it folded and closed so that the whale is initially hidden. And so you could actually make this a little bit bigger if you wanted, especially since the glimmer plate is a little bit wider. So if I were to do this again, I would maybe make this a little bit wider. But here's a final recap of all of um, the cards that I made today. This is my flat card, which is a scene that I stamped out with a little bit of masking and I colored the entire scene with alcohol markers, a first for me. I'm really, really um, happy with how that one turned out. This one features the large die of the month, but I'm using it a little bit differently. And instead of creating a water scene inside of my jar, I've just put some butterflies in the jar and I've got a couple of butterflies outside of the jar as well, all cut from pattern paper. And the butterflies were from BB Cameron's um, butterfly collection. This is my interactive card, which features the small die of the month and has the dancing legs interaction. The little scene elements are a combination of um, items from the large die of the month as well as the small die of the month. And I love how um, fun it is to make those <laughs> make those legs dance. So really, really fun that that die set. And something pretty different too. So I I really love all of the club kits this month because I do feel like they are kind of unique, definitely unique to my craft room. And here's my pop-up card, a five by seven wiper card. So when it's closed, you just see the ocean waves. And when you open it up, you have the whale that um that pops up and it almost looks like he's about to dive over, you know, that uh, sort of bridge piece on the side, on the right side there. He just crosses over that. So really, really fun. And I'm super excited. Um, I, I don't know that I have a favorite um, this month because I kind of love them all for different reasons. But if you have a favorite, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much, and until next time, happy crafting, and have a fabulous day. Bye!